Welcome to our first 2021 Small Talks for Small Business. I am Mirna Eusebio, Senior Vice President of Product and Marketing for Optimum and Suddenlink Business. At Optimum and Suddenlink Business, we are more than just your internet provider. We offer a wide range of connectivity, security, advanced voice solutions, entertainment, and mobile services to more than 400,000 businesses across 21 states in the US. We've developed this virtual series to provide you, our customers, with relevant topics of interest presented by industry leaders that can provide you some useful tools and tips to help you grow your business. With us today to discuss email marketing strategy is Laura Caggiano, owner and chief solutions officer of Bloom Media. Laura and her colleagues at Bloom Media have been providing strategic marketing support for top brands for over 15 years. Combining her years of New York City agency experience and small business ownership, Laura brings a unique set of marketing insights and best practices to share with our small business community. Today, Laura will walk us through building a successful email marketing campaign and will offer best practices you can use to start building your own cost-efficient email marketing campaign. So now I'll turn it over to Laura. Hi there, Laura. Happy to have you. We're so excited and ready. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Mirna, thank you so much for that wonderful intro, intro and um, thank you all for joining us for here today. Um, 2020 has been an unprecedented year for small businesses. And as we enter 2021, we're still in the midst of overcoming so many of these challenges and seeking viable ways to grow business. Email marketing remains one of the most cost effective ways to broaden your reach to a wider audience. Um, and with a little careful planning and research put into your put into your email campaigns, you can be highly successful in converting contacts into customers, which is why today what we'll be doing is um, taking a look at some best practices that you can consider when developing your email marketing plan. So a perfect scenario in any email campaign would be sending the right message to the right people at the right time. And um, one place you can start is by defining your audience. No matter what you sell, you need to have a clear idea of who your audience is in order to effectively communicate with them. Uh, and an effective email is a relevant email. So like everything in marketing, understanding what your buyers want allows you to tailor your messages to meet their needs. And by sending targeted messages to smaller segments, you can have a really good picture of how your how these segments are interacting with your campaigns, right? And that's what you want. You want that data. That data is going to help to inform um, how you how you decide to roll out your campaigns moving forward. Um, so one one way we do that is through segmentation uh, by identifying a single characteristic about that you want to filter your audience by. You can be in more intentional about what you say, and um, by by creating that, by, by creating these segments of, and identifying the audience of, identifying these characteristics within the audience that you want to want to segment by, um, this will help to increase engagement. How the way that we look at that as, as proof of that is through a lot of these wonderful platforms like Campaign Monitor and you know Mailchimp. Uh, according to Mailchimp, the average result is twenty three percent higher with segmented emails and uh, open rates is 49% uh, higher, I'm sorry, 23% higher open rates and 49% higher click-through rates. Um, so definitely a lot of great research behind why we should segment and a lot of great proof points there. Uh, personalization. Customers are 29% more likely to open up a personalized email, right? And then um, again, Campaign Monitor says uh, uh, that 26% more likely to open as well. And um, experience says six, time higher, six times higher engagement levels with personalized emails. 
So where do we get this personalized data? This is something that's going to come from your buyer behaviors. This is something that's going to come from your, your uh, customer surveys. And if you do have email marketing tools, um, this, this is where the data is going to come from to help you to personalize these emails and make them, again, as relevant as possible. The goal here uh, in creating a targeted email, again, is what we want to do as much as possible is increase engagement. Um, we want to build a trustful relationships that are ideally going to generate higher return on investment for us. Um, building your list, right? I won't say it's one of the most important elements of a successful email strategy. And um, there's a couple of ways to do this as well, right? So a uh, website sign-up forms. Um, <clears throat> we definitely want to make sure that if you don't have a pop-up form on your website, you really want to consider adding one. Um, you know, I, I, we included a great stat here from MailChimp saying how they increased growth by uh, 50%, over 50%. Um, newsletter sign-up form, uh, you know, a lot of times there's, you know, people will come to your site or, or they'll, you'll send out even an, an email that will introduce the idea that, you know, we, you can keep up with what's, you know, with what's happening here and, you know, we'll provide relevant, valuable content to you on a regular basis. You know, just give us your email address and we'll, you can keep up. Um, share sign up forms on social media. That's another way. And just remember when you're sharing sign up forms on social media, you know, that is a really wonderful way again for people to to remain aware when you have something new to offer. Um, you know, another way to consider doing this is through um, hosting a contest or incentives, right? I mean, how many times have we signed up for an email list because, you know, somebody, somebody's offering something in exchange, right? Um, a percentage off or something along those lines. Um, what we don't recommend is list buying. Uh, list buying tends to get flagged as uh, spam very often. And the last thing we want to do is to... Um, the last thing we want to do is cause unsubscribes, right? So we definitely don't want to do that. So consider those uh, uh, those as a few options to building your lists. Deciding what to write, okay? So an email with a purpose really sp that really speaks to your subscribers. You know, that's a that's a nice way to put it. We always want to think we're being purposeful and meaningful, and uh, making sure we're creating messages that resonate with our audience. Um, there's a number of different formats here, and I don't mean this to overwhelm you at all, but you know everybody will come at this from a different from a different perspective, and a lot of it comes down to bandwidth too. And we'll talk about that when we talk about frequency, right? Because if you're not working with an outside vendor, um, what you might want to consider very uh, very strongly is: um, Do I have the ability for, to fulfill on this on a regular basis? So, is it a weekly newsletter? Do you have enough valuable content to offer on a weekly basis? Um, is your sales cycle longer, right? So um, when we have somebody uh, enter our sales cycle, we want to continue to nurture that lead. So we, maybe we create a lead nurturing campaign. Um, and, you know, uh, social media sends. You have an audience that's engaged on there. We want to maybe send through there. One of the things we just want to consider is that, um, you know, uh, what social media typically email sends to, talk, uh, to sorry, to social media um, typically require uh, text only. So you're going to want to be really clear, keep it concise, keep it concise, and um, use bullets to uh, deliver your main points. And so, the you know the key takeaway from this one would probably be just to, to definitely set up different lists for different types of emails. Um, you know, uh, always keeping in mind what those customers and prospects have opted in for. Establish frequency and goals. So we're going to want to keep our audience excited about receiving our content, right? There, there's a, a there's an important balance here about you know sending consistently and not sending too much that they're tuning you out, right? So you're going to make a schedule. Again, this goes back to being really aware of what you can fulfill on. So again, if you have internal resources dedicated to this, that's wonderful. And if you have an external partner, that's great. But with a lot of small businesses, you're wearing a lot of hats and you want to um, just make sure that whatever it is that you um, that you decide to do, you decide to do it in a way that is works with your schedule as well. So, um, and also, you know, 
works in line with whatever your audience's expectations are. So if they signed up for a monthly email, you're going to want to fulfill on that, right? Um, you're going to want to monitor rates. This is going to help you. We're going to talk about testing and monitoring. This is going to help you decide if the frequency that you are um, you know, deploying is, is right for you, or we need to increase that or decrease that depending on what you're seeing as response rates. And again, the overarching goal here is to gain mind share and build trust. So we want to continue to send and make sure that they're, that we're engaging with our audience to keep ourselves top of mind, but not to the point that we're, you know, they're tuning out or they're unsubscribing. Writing and designing your emails. So we're going to, you know, we have our, our, our message here is about, I, initially about focusing on your message, keeping it straightforward and streamlined. We're big proponents of this. Um, it could be very much so because we, you know, we have a lot of, of business to business clients and um, what we try to do is, you know, under, again, going back to understanding our audience, people's inboxes are un inundated with so many messages that they have to read and they have to pay attention to. And so if I want to get their attention, I'm going to want to make sure that I'm concise and I am engaging. And, um, you know, we do that through our messages and through our, uh, our, our, through, our through design. Um so in terms of the messaging, you know, we want to make sure that your story is that you're telling your story in a hierarchy. You want to keep it concise. Um, you want to make sure it's scannable, right? Bullet points. We love bullet points. We, we like to make sure that um, whatever key messages that I'm going to convey, I'm going to be able to um, I'm going to be able to take away in a few seconds. Um, design and layout. So um, there are a ton of of pre-existing templates out there that you should absolutely leverage if it supports your message, right? So we go back to, again, thinking about being meaningful and the story that we want to tell. Um, we are not big proponents of phone. We strongly believe uh, in not doing form over function. So I won't try to retrofit my message into an existing template um, if it's not going to do it justice. Okay. So um, even though we work with a lot of of marketing automation platforms and marketing tools um, for email uh, deployment, what we wind up doing is a lot of times um, crafting the message that which we think is right, um, designing a custom template and, um, you know, uh, creating that HTML, uploading it to some of these platforms. But again, there's a, there are so many wonderful templates out there that there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Take a look at what they're, what they're, what's available to you and make sure that um, it supports your message. And um, we also didn't made a note here about calls, limit the limiting calls to action. I wanted to, to make sure that I was clear about this. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have multiple calls to action within your email. Ideally, um, all, however many you have, it's going, they're all going to the same place. So for example, um, if I'm dealing with um, a prospect that is not ready to um, that is not ready to uh, talk to me, but they want to learn more, then I might have multiple calls to actions in, in there, which might want, one might state a learn more uh, button, which is an easy in, um, or another one might be um, talk to us today, and maybe for somebody who's a little bit further along and actually wants to have a conversation. But regardless, if I'm sending them all to the same landing page, or you know, they're going to be able to opt in for that more information. Again, we are trying to send a message to somebody to get their attention for the right reasons to make sure it's relevant to them and we want them to opt in for more. That's why we create our landing pages and our other and um, our websites, whatever we want to wherever we want to get them to to learn more information because you're not going to get it all across in an email. And then um, one of the obviously again, but going back to monitoring and testing, um, we want to compare. Right. We want we don't want to just go out and say, OK, I crafted my message. I have a beautiful template and now I'm going to go out and do this. Um, the reason why I say this is because, you know, we have actually seen a, a, just a, a text only very simple email written um, from an executive or um, from a an engineer um, do very well, even better than um, a nicely designed HTML email. Um, some people sometimes people really just like that 
personal approach. And so um, it, there's a lot of different reasons to test um, graphics against images, uh, graphics against messaging, et cetera, right? And um, one of the other things that we that that we do even is, um, you know, there are tons of organizations out there that put lots of money and resources toward um, their marketing. And why not take a look at some of the emails that stand out to you? Because, you know, one of the things that, that you know, anyone can do in that sense is imagine um, they have done quite a bit to research and create their own best practices. So if there's an email that stands out to you and you think can represent your brand, great, by all means, take it, use it for inspiration. And um, it can, uh, you know, it's definitely nice to have in your repertoire. Testing your emails. Okay, so... Um, this is tells us where the proof is in the pudding, right? So the variation, the testing a variation of your email to help build a strategy that works. Um, when we talk about A-B testing here, and what we mean is there's a, there's a, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, one of the things that we might want to do is uh, we'll, we'll take our audience and we'll split it in half and um, we'll decide, okay, so I have a specific email I'm sending out to this audience. I'm going to, to split it in half and half are, are going to receive one subject line and a half are going to receive another. Um, half are going to go image heavy, half are going to go strictly message, you know, copy heavy. Um, there are different ways that we that we A-B test or we do an A-B split. Um, this is going to tell you, um, this is going to give you some key truths that that's ideally what, that's what you want to learn. That's what you want to gain here. And, um, you know, some of the things that you're going to learn might be, um, you know, not just about when, you know, what you're going to write or, or how you're going to design it, but also maybe the day that you're going to send. So we, you know, a, a quick note here is that email sent on a Tuesday get higher open rates. Um, even though that's a fact, it doesn't necessarily need to be true for your specific business. Uh, we had a client that um, because of the amount of information that they had to share on a weekly basis uh, and knowing how busy that their audience was, they decided to do a weekly recap on a Friday and they called it weekend reading. And they became highly successful in um, and, and people were very happy about and raving about that they were able to, they had the ability to gain this information or this, this, the valuable content that they had to share because a lot of it was report related and things that, that could help to um, help to support their roles at their companies. But but what they were really happy about was the fact that somebody took took into consideration um, what their audience wanted and found a way to give it to them in a way that was easy to digest. Um, some of the other things you want to do in testing is you you crafted a beautiful message and um, have a wonderful layout and it's all coded, ready to go. And, um, you know, the last thing you wanted to do is to not look that same way in among different browsers, especially browsers, especially in mobile. Um, so send test emails you, you have to your colleagues, to your family and friends, whoever need to, um, and especially on mobile. So, you know, we talked about... Um, you know, different things that you want to consider in terms of, you know, your messages, right? So we talked about um, keeping emails concise. Um, and the reason why we talk about keeping, um, the reason why we'll talk about keeping subject lines concise is a lot of times because of mo uh, because of mobile, right? So 85% of users are opening are, are opening emails on, on smartphones, right? And of those, uh, you know, 70% are saying they're closing something, they're, they're, uh, trashing an email in a couple of seconds if it's not formatted properly. So test your emails, um, make sure that they that they look great. Um, and you could put together, it's, it sounds like it, it again, it is a lot of, there's a lot of variables here, but there's really not, especially because there's so many, um, there's so many ways to create a checklist for yourself to make sure that this is the, this is the, these are the steps that I'm going to take and to ensure that all my hard work and my effort that went into my email is going to work as effectively once I share it with my audience. Uh, evaluate email costs and free tools. So this goes back to, uh, you know, our early statement about email marketing being one of the most cost effective ways to market your brand. Uh, there are a ton of free tools out there and the majority of them will allow you to be on the free the free program or the free plan uh, till about 
2000 contacts or under. So um, what, you know, what we did here is we put together a, a few, you know, a few options to, to consider because of, of experience that we've had, and as well as a list of, you know, other options that you might want to consider. Um, on our Bloom Media blog, we do have a complete list if you want to click through and, and try them out for yourselves. But um, it, it, the way that you're going to weigh these is going to be, you know, what it comes down to what it is that you want to, what you want to achieve. Right. So um, a lot of them have this, a similar, a lot of them have similar features, but for example, HubSpot, you know, HubSpot is more known for their, um, you, know, you know, they're more known as a CMS, right? So um, what we do with, with HubSpot is that, um, you know, if we're going to use some of their um, marketing automation tools, right. Um, we'll we'll take a look at okay i'm going to if i'm going to consider if either i have hubspot as a, as a um either i have hubspot right now i'm going to consider using their marketing automation tools i might say okay um i want to start with their free email marketing platform because there's going to be great integration as i move forward but it doesn't have to be like i said if you go in there and you and you like the interface and you feel like that the that the tools are easy drag and drop which most of them are and um it feels right and and it's a comfortable and inter and you know environment for you uh it might be worth a try uh, mailchimp we typically use mailchimp on on um on a pretty regular basis um you know we find that the interface is, is easy to work with um we typically will design our our emails in html and then um upload them into the system um but um you know we've been really really happy with the the results of of um of our campaigns but and also the ability to be able to to track our opens and and our engagement and our click through rates uh sender's another one again a very might they, they all might be similar in some ways but you know sender is one of the ones that's known for um you know beautiful uh templates that allow you to make uh you know your email your e-newsletters without html and um personalization etc so um again i don't want to send you in one direction because there there's so many different as I said, there's so many different options and you need to find the one that's right for you. But we, but I did want to narrow a little bit. I mean, MailChimp is a really user-friendly place to start if it's, if you're not using a marketing automation platform or a, an email, um, an email marketing tool right now. Measuring your performance. So um, we want to be really meticulous about our key performance indicators and, um, you know, and measuring our campaigns, right? Um, you know, we're putting a lot of effort into these, into this, into this marketing channel, and we want to make sure that it's not in vain. So we want to, we want to see where, um, where our wins are and where we can, you know, make some cross corrections as we go, as we continue our campaigns. Um, so one of the places we want to try is open, we want to take a look at is opens and clicks. Um, it's, it's pretty obvious, but, um, I like to look more at, uh, at our conversions, right. You know, our click through rates because, you know, opens it's great. Maybe, maybe, um, they took a glance at my information, but my goal is to get them to that next step, which is ideally, I want to get them to a landing page. I want them to reach uh, to complete a form. I want them to reach out to me, um, or, you know, and, uh, that's the way that I'm proving that my campaign is being most effective, um, your e-commerce data. So, you know, you send out a campaign and you see an uptick in your, in your purchase behaviors, which is, which is a really good indicator of how that's working. Right. Um, website traffic. If you see an increase in your, in your, um, in the traffic or the visits on your website, you know, once you, you've put a campaign out there, that's, that's another way to, that's another way to track, um, your performance. So, um, keep an eye on these things. Most importantly, though, establish your goals ahead of time, right? So um, what is your goal? Are you just looking to increase inside traffic? I, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, are you just looking to, to as it's inside site traffic? Um, are you just looking to, to increase your website traffic? Are you looking to uh, gain new customers? Are you know, are you, are you, what did it, what is it that you want to achieve? It's really important to, um, to establish ahead of time so you can, um, so you can, track performance accordingly and, and see if you're meeting your goals. Um, 
And, uh, you know, it, it is important to look at other industries, right? So we have a tip here about to consider how you open the click-through rates compared to other industries. So I know that the average, you know, I know that the average open rate it, for, um, for business services companies uh, to send out an email, it would be is 8%. So that at least at the very least is a good starting point from where I can measure my campaigns against. And, and that, and um, things like this, these are things that obviously we're happy to help with, but if you just Googled, um, you know, what is the average open rate for a, you know, uh, for a business services, you know, um, company, they'll be able to, you'll come up with some, some uh, great stats. Okay. And um, so we covered a lot here today. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that it was, it was really helpful, but, uh, it's, it, I think it would be a great opportunity to recap a little bit, um, with our key takeaways. So, um, one of the places we want to start, if we want to create targeted and more effective email campaigns is by, you know, defining our audience. Um, and we talked about how segmentation and personalization are great ways to help you do that. Um, you want to build your lists, right? Um, there's a couple of ways to build your lists by the customer data that you receive, but also, um, you know, we don't recommend list buying because again, we want to avoid, we definitely want to avoid our, uh, unsubscribes and, um, you know, spams. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Uh, deciding on what to write again, what does your audience want? What will they find valuable to them? Um, what what are your business goals? What are you looking to achieve? Aligning those are a great way to consider to to think about that. Um, and and do I have enough valuable content to offer up on a weekly basis? Or you know maybe a newsletter is great, but maybe on a monthly basis. Um, <clears throat> you know thinking about as we talked about with special offers or events and things like that. You know these will punctuate some of the other longer campaigns that you have going on. Um, and keep, always keep in mind what subscribers signed up for, because we want to make sure that we're staying true to their expectations. Um, establishing frequency and goals. Um, we want to make sure that not a, you're just not making a schedule, but it's a schedule that is doable and workable um, based on the bandwidth that you have or the resources that you have allocated to this. Um, and we want to monitor our rates there. So our frequency we're sending out on a uh, we're sending out on a weekly basis. But guess what? People are not paying as much attention um, because maybe I'm sending too frequently. We want to make sure that we're remaining top of mind. Um, but we don't want to make sure we want to make sure that we're uh, not people aren't tuning out. Um, write and design your emails. Um, so again, laying out your story in um, a hierarchy is really great. And um, I just wanted to leave you with a couple of really great stats to back up the concise aspect of things. So 26%, um, I believe, let me think about it. The number of, the, I'm thinking the number count stats. Let me, just, this is really helpful. Okay, so um, email, 50 to 125 characters. Um, according to campaign monitor will result in a 50% plus response rates. Um, uh, 40 to 100 characters for pre-headers. But um, if you're not using pre-headers, please think about um, using them. Anything that allows you to pack more detail in your emails is going to be helpful. Um, and um, one of the things that we also want to make sure that we're doing is not letting that preheader be too obtrusive with your with your main email content um, and subject lines, subject lines, um, 28, 28 to 50 characters with subject lines. Um, again, we're going back to the mobile audience here, too. We're thinking about them. Um, if your if your data is telling you that everybody is opening yours on a, on a smart your emails on a smartphone, then um, we're going to want to make sure that we're keeping them concise and um, making sure that, you know, your message doesn't get truncated too bad uh, in order to get your message across. Right. Um, testing your email campaigns. We're going to A-B test subject lines. We can A-B test designs. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to do that. Um, and um, be sure to design and check your emails again on mobile devices, right? Make sure that everything aligns properly the way that you expected, the way you saw it on desktop um, is the way that we're seeing it on everybody's 
on everybody's desktop. Um, evaluate email costs and free tools. Again, there are a ton of plans out there that will let you stay on there until, uh, you know, um, to over 2000 contacts. So you have to, you know, if you, as long as you're keeping it under that, you're in great shape and they're very intuitive and easy to use. So um, take a look at, um, some of the ones that we might have recommended. If you want more, you can always take a look at the Bloom blog. We have quite a few of them listed there, but um, just find the one that's right, that's right for you. And um, measuring your performance. Again, these, these um, key performance indicators and industry benchmarks that we talked about are going to be a great starting point for you to measure your campaigns against. And ideally the information that you're going to get from there is going to help to inform, to inform your next email campaigns and make your email marketing strategy even stronger. So um, that's what we have for you today. And I really hope that you um, found value in this and that if there's anything that we can help you with, we're happy to, to do so. Um, I wish you the best of luck uh, with your small business and um, I hope that you uh, stay tuned for our next event coming up in early spring.